it's God's character that he works in our hearts when we let the Holy Spirit work in our lives, right? And Jesus is in our hearts, right? Then his character comes, grows in us, just like fruit grows on a tree, right? And so that's what we want to do. We want to say, help me to be more loving like you, Jesus, right? And so that's what this first book is about. It is called Love Bird. Okay? I have a question. <clears throat> Who else told, who's actually the best storyteller, the best writer in the world, is the best writer, and he told stories to teach character and principles and morals and lessons, but they weren't called fables. We don't call his stories fables. Do you know what I'm talking about? Who else told stories? Far better writer than me. Anybody know? Stories are powerful. Even for adults, we learn through story, right? Do you know what I'm talking about? How about over here? Anybody know? <laughs> Any adults want to pipe in? Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. He taught through parables, right? He told stories that helped people connect to what he wanted them to learn. Yeah, so I don't want myself in with his, his category of, a, of an author of story, but we're going to hope you enjoy this today. <clears throat> Lovebird. Oh, and you know what? I want you to meet. I brought Lovebird along with me, by the way. Would you like to meet Lovebird? Yes. Oh, Lovebird. Can you whistle? Any whistle will do because. Oh, there's a good one. Oh, hey, Lovebird. There's into their community. He built his nest above their home in the great oak tree. Attempting to be neighborly and to be polite, they tried to introduce themselves and meet their neighbor right. But when they went to meet the bird, something was the matter. He mimicked everything they said with chatter, 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 chatter. Oh dear. Oh dear. <laughs> Feeling puzzled, they went home unexpectedly. And then they, that night they found out just how rude this bird could be. Chirp, 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 chirp. He was a great big copycat of them when they were talking. He'd open up his mouthy beak and then he'd start his mocking. He'd chirp just like the crickets did. Chirp, 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 cricket, cricket. And peep like peepers do. Beep, 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 They'd never seen the likes of him. This neighbor was so nasty. Making mockery of them was anything but classy. But they could see that they were stuck with his nest above. So they decided to be kind and treat this bird with love. They held a backyard meeting with every family who lived beside or near their home in the great oak tree. They came up with a simple plan and hoped that it would be the way to help the mockingbird be kind and neighborly. They all gathered and agreed that they would only speak kind words to the mockingbird who seemed to just repeat. Repeat. It didn't happen overnight. It took a little time, but more and more the mockingbird returned words that were kind. 
drink and life was pleasant once again for the family and everyone who made their home near the great oak tree. Love's more than fuzzy feelings we feel deep down inside. Sometimes it's something that we do when we make up our minds. And when you choose to love this way, it's often very true. Eventually, you just might see that love returned to you. Right? So now I have some questions for you. Okay. Okay. See what you were what you were hearing with this story. What kind of a bird moved into the tree branch above the squirrel family? Anybody else? Yeah? Yeah? What kind of bird? What is that bird? <laughs> Do you want to tell me? Anybody else? A mockingbird. A mockingbird. And what makes mockingbirds different from most birds? Chirp, 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 chirp. They mock. Yep, they, they mock. Yep, they mock or mimic, right? Yeah. Can anybody think of another <coughs> bird that mocks or mimics that can mimic sounds? Yeah, yeah, parrots. Um, how about how about a native Pennsylvanian bird that can do the same thing other than mockingbirds? There's another one that kind of fascinates me. They're black. A crow. Raven. Yeah, yeah, ravens can do the same thing. They're quite smart. They're like the dog of the bird world. They're very, very intelligent. Yeah, but anyway, I digress. The mockingbird, oh, he was rude to his neighbors. How would you feel if someone was rude to you? Sad, yeah. How about you? How would you feel? Somebody was rude. Wouldn't feel good, right? Yeah. And you would go to his room. He'd go to his room if he was rude. Yes, yes. Sometimes, sometimes if someone is... <laughs> Sometimes that's a good that's a good thought. Sometimes if someone's rude to us, honestly, sometimes it makes us mad too, right? Yeah. So I wonder how this girl felt, but you know what? Let's see here. They didn't respond in, in anger, right? Did the mockingbird stop being unkind to the other animals right away, or did it take a little time for his behavior to change? No. Yeah. Took a little time. Yeah. Yep, and sometimes that's true of us too, right? If someone's not being kind, and we, we, we decide we're gonna act like the squirrels and be kind to them, sometimes it takes a little time and consistently being kind. Being kind again and again, right? Yeah. But eventually, just like the mockingbird, behavior can change. So, here's a question I have for you. If the neighbors had not all agreed to be kind to the mockingbird, how do you think the story might have ended differently? Any ideas? Yes. Yeah, they, they wouldn't have become friends and peace wouldn't have been restored to their community, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe somebody would have moved away or maybe they would have stayed in their little house more instead of coming out. And yeah, yeah, it could have ended very differently. Let's see, do you think that the neighbors would have responded with love to the mockingbird if the squirrel family hadn't encouraged them? Maybe not, yeah. Sometimes it takes one person just to say to their friends, let's, let's just be kind to this person. Let's see if, maybe they're just having a, a bad day. Let's, let's go see if they wanna play with us, right? And that's called being a leader. And you're not too young to be leaders. And that's a good example of how you can be, choosing to be kind and helping maybe others around you choose to be kind too, right? Yeah. Let's see, how could you show love the next time someone is unkind to you? Any ideas? I just said one, didn't I? So you could invite them to play, right? Yeah. What else? Go ahead. Um, say nice words. What's that? Say nice words. Say nice words, yes. Words yeah. are so powerful. Yeah. Um, play on the playground. Play on the playground, absolutely. That's a great way to make friends. Yeah, I agree. You guys did great. You were listening. Great listening ears. Okay, can you stand up for me? Because guess what else? I also like to write songs. 
And every book needs a, a song to go with it. Can I teach you a song? Yeah? The parents are, and, and the adults and the grandmas and whoever is in here? You want to you wanna chime in? Sure, sure. Okay. <laughs> if you want to chime in, you're welcome to stand or sit. It's up to you. But this is how it goes. It's very simple. Okay? It goes like this. Squirrel ears, you got it right. Because squirrel ears, you chose to be polite. It happens every time when you make up your mind. You're wise. Can you sing that with me? Ready? I'll do it again. And then you can sing it after, after me, each one here. So let's try it like this. Ready? Squirrel ears, you got it right. Squirrel ears, you got it right. Squirrel ears, you chose to be polite. Squirrel ears, you chose to be polite. It happens every time when you make up your mind. It happens every time when you make up your mind. You're wise. You're wise. So are you too young to be wise? No. Nope. You know where wisdom comes from, right? Where? Through God. Yes from God's word. So the more you read God's word, the more wisdom you have. Yeah, so you're not too young to be leaders, you're not too young to be wise, and you're not too young to show love and to influence people with God's character, right? Yeah, okay, have a seat. <laughs> All right, this next story, Glove Glum was able to make it because he's a fish. So he couldn't come for a visit because that could be detrimental. <laughs> <laughs> Which means he had to stay in the water. Okay. But this is Glub Glum. Isn't he cute? This story is a bit of a tongue twister. It's called Glub Glum's Ship Flip. Oh my goodness, what is that all about? Let's shall we find out? Okay. There once was a fish named Glub Glum. Oh wait. What does that mean? Have you ever heard the word glum? Yeah? What does glum mean? Anybody know? We don't hear that word a whole lot. Glum means sad. He's kind of a depressed little fish. Yeah, he's sad. All right, so let's find out. There once was a fish named Glub Glum whose face was sulky and sullen. His eyes were cast down on ocean floor ground, a sad and crabby old beach bum. Oh dear. Oh, isn't he cute though? This fish was a bottom floor feeder no top of the ocean snack eater. And there he was stuck. He wouldn't look up. He stayed so unhappy to be there. Hmm. So he can get up and swim around, but he's just not, because he's just kind of glum. Right? Hi. One day in the depths of the ocean arose an enormous commotion, but Glub Glub was stuck in mire and muck. He had not a clue nor a notion. See, he was looking down, so he didn't know what was going on up there, did he? Oh dear, but there was something going on. What is it, I wonder? A ship up above set its anchor, a whale of an ocean oil tanker. Uh-oh. The anchor came down, hit ocean floor ground. He flipped upside down like a feather. Whew. Didn't hit him. Oh my goodness, but it came so close that the impact made the water flip him right around. So he's not looking down anymore. Hmm. He lay there for just a quick minute and saw what the ocean had in it. He got a good look, said, that's off the hook, and took off and started to swim it. Oh my goodness. He saw rose coral, seahorses, and clam pearls blue squid ink and sunken ship vessels. But Glub Glum liked best the big treasure chest of colorful sparkly jewels. There's all kinds of beauty around him, isn't there? Who knew? This fish was no longer unhappy, but it wasn't the saltwater taffy. His fish hook collection nor other things mentioned, but how his fins felt to be flappy. Oh. He's got a new freedom in his life, doesn't he? Swimming around like that. The ship flip he had was corrective. It made him a bit more reflective. For joy comes to us by looking above 
and gaining a higher perspective. Oh, those were big words that I just said, aren't they? Perspective, what is that? Hmm, let's go to our questions. Let's see, here's the first, the first question. Why was Glub Glum sulky and sad in the beginning of the story? Why was he so sad? We don't really know, but, but we do know what. Which way was he facing? He was facing that way, right? Yeah. Down. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, let's keep going. Hmm. What happened that changed Glub Glum's attitude? What happened? <coughs> Something happened. He saw what? <coughs> he saw everything. Yeah. What what happened that flipped him over? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. The impact of that anchor. Boom! It made the made the water flip him right over. And all of a sudden he was looking at something from a different angle, wasn't he? At everything from a different angle. Because you know what? Did you hear the words mire and muck? That's what he was kind of laying in, the mire and muck. And you want to know something? It's, a, it's something very true. Here's a little secret. And all the adults in here can, can say this is true too. That we always have things in our lives that are sometimes hard, right? And there are things that sometimes make us sad but there's also beauty all around us, everywhere. And what we focus our eyes on, right? The sad mire and muck or the beauty is gonna go a long way in determining our perspective and our attitude, right? And who, here's the big key, I'm gonna give it away, but here's the big point of the story. You see, look who, look which direction Glob Glob is looking now. Where's he looking? Uh, yeah, yeah, he's looking up. And that's, that's, see the light coming down, right? He's no longer looking down, he's looking up. And what do we think about, like we can't see, we can't see God when we look up, but that's kind of what, what we're getting at here, right? When we look, when we set our eyes on Jesus, even when we're sad or something's hard or something's new and uncomfortable, when we, when we set our eyes on Jesus, that goes a long way in determining how much joy we have in our hearts, right? Oh my goodness, strawberries give me joy. I gotta be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get some strawberries and, and we make jelly. Oh, I'm coming over. <laughs> <laughs> I love strawberry jelly. Yes, that's awesome. I love it. So let's see, do we have any more questions? <coughs> oh, here's one. Glove one, this is an important one. Oh. Oh, we'll back up a little bit. Okay. Had the beautiful things around Glove Glum just appeared, or had they been there the whole time? Yes. Absolutely. Right? And that's true in our lives, too. Yeah, there's beauty everywhere if we look at it. Glove Glum had fun collecting things on his new adventures. <laughs> but where did the joy he found come from? Did it come from his things that he found? No. no. He had fun with those things, right? Yeah. But where did his joy, where did that joy come from? Hmm, I'll go back and look. Let me see, I'm gonna read it again. This fish was no longer unhappy. It wasn't the saltwater taffy. His fish hook collection or other things mentioned, but how his fins felt to be flappy. So it was this new freedom that he had from, from where he was focused, right? Because before he was focused on the sad, but now he's focused on God and Jesus and looking all around and he's just, he's having more fun, sure. And yes, he found some fun, exciting things, but things don't make us happy, right? The freedom that we have that, and the joy that comes with Jesus is where, is where true joy comes from, right? Understand? Yeah, okay. Let's see. It must have felt scary for Glove Glove when the anchor flipped him upside down, but it turned out to be for his good. Hmm, has something ever felt scary but turned out to be good for you? Yeah, like what? Want to tell me? You don't have to tell me, but if you want, tell me. Has anybody ever moved? Yeah, has he moved? That can be scary, yeah? Like if you're used to one, one neighborhood and you move to a new one and have to make new friends or a different school, 
yeah, that can feel scary, but then you might meet your very best friend that you have in your whole of your whole life at that new school, and it turns out to be good. Yeah. Cucumbers. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Do you like Larry Boy? Yeah. Yeah, I like that cucumber. I like cucumbers. And, and um, we have, um, we have Larry Boy. Super Larry Boy? Yeah. Yep. And, and we have it. That's wonderful. <laughs> I love veggie tails. Yeah. yeah. And, Never too old. And we, and we um, played the, um, we played the tomatoes and pebbles. That is wonderful. Isn't it amazing how fruit and vegetables just grow? Yeah. And you know what? That's how God's Holy Spirit works in our lives, too. Because our hearts, do you know that your heart is like a garden? Yeah. It's like a garden that you plant all your fruits and vegetables in. And when we hide God's word in our heart, guess what? We become more like Jesus because he grows his fruit in our hearts. Is, is, is God died in the blood? Yes, so that we can have Jesus in our hearts, right? Yeah. Yeah, and go be with him someday. Yeah. yeah. And, right. and, and, and go Yes. Oh, I'm so glad that you know Jesus. Yeah. I got another question. You ready for my question? No. Yeah. Okay. Ready? Here we go. We read that Glovegum gained a higher perspective. Oh, there's that big word. From his ship flip. What does it mean to have a higher perspective? And how do we find one? Big word. In the water. Well, Glovegum found a higher perspective when he was in the water. Does anybody else know what I mean? How about one of you girls? Do you know what it means? What's a what's a higher perspective? What's that mean? You know? Perspective is how you see things, right? How you see them when you look at them. And so he was down here looking at the mud, he saw mud. But when he looked up, he saw beauty, right? So that's your perspective. Another word for that is vantage point, it's where you're looking at things from, right? And so we talked a little bit about this. We, we gain a higher perspective, not just by standing on a chair and looking around the room, right? That's one way of a higher perspective, but we gain a higher perspective by, by looking, at, looking at Jesus, right? Okay. I got one more question. Since the word glum, we learned means sad, it doesn't really fit our fish anymore because he's not glum anymore. Now he has so much joy. So the name Glob Glum doesn't really fit our fish anymore. What should we call him now? Any ideas? Uh, happy. Happy. That's a nice name for a fish. Mm. I love that. Anybody else? Um, what would you call our fish? Um, happy. Happy halibut. Happy halibut. <laughs> happy. <laughs> I love it. Yeah? Uh, joy. joy. That's a beautiful name. Yeah. Oh, good. Any others? Do you want to hear my fish song? Yeah? Okay, same tune. So that's the easy part. You want to stand up? <coughs> okay. Gotta think. Okay, here's how it goes. Glob glum, you were stuck. Glob glum, you were stuck. But glob glum, things are looking up. But glob glum, things are looking up. Oh, hold on. <laughs> Blanking. Don't go back to your old rut. Let joy fill your cup. Eyes up. Right? Don't, Don't go, go back to your, your old rut. rut. Let, Let joy, joy fill your, your cup. Eyes up. up. Very good. Should we do it one more time? Okay, ready? We'll try to sing the whole thing straight through. Glove, glove, you were stuck. But glove, glove, things are looking up. Don't go back to your old rut. Let joy fill your cup. Eyes up. Good job. You're good singers. You all listened so well. Did you have fun? Yeah. Okay. We're doing okay. Time for a song. All right. So, um, let me just see here.
Yeah. So I hope you all were slightly entertained. <laughs> um, um, I, I like to write songs as well. I'm a singer-songwriter background. And um, I have a song or two, if, if we have the time, that I'd love to share with you. Just sort of to spin off of, you know, a simple story, but not always easy concepts, really, right? Like to love the, love the difficult person or um, to, to find joy even when there's mud and mire. Um, <clears throat> those are pretty real concepts um, that even are hard for adults sometimes. Do you know that? Sometimes it's even hard for adults. There's a secret for you to um, to be, be to love the person that's that's difficult. Yeah, and um, to find joy when we're struggling and when we're hurting or when we're going through something difficult. Um, but um, anyway, so there's. Can we, yeah, can we move the mic? Okay. <clears throat> so when I'm going through something that's, oh, thank you. That's making, oh, we good? When I'm going through something that's making it, um, you know, life a, a little challenging or struggling to find my joy, this is where I go. <laughs> Obviously God's word, but also um, my piano is a refuge for me. And so um, with the few minutes remaining, there's a couple songs that I'd like to sing um, that kind of speak about. <clears throat> um, this first one is Perspective, um, and I hope that it blesses you. So here we go. Oh, it's that's right. There we go. Also, disclaimer, I'm not a pianist. <laughs> I don't read music. I write it, but I key by ear badly. But it's okay. It's my joyful noise, right? <clears throat> I see you clearly when it's raining. Thank you. 
let that speak to somebody today. Um, and I'm going to just uh, sing one more song. This song is called Found, um, and it's pretty special to me. Um, and I hope that you can just kind of sit in it and, and listen to these words alone, soak in a little bit. And I hope that, that you're in this place as well, where you know who you are in Jesus because he's found you. So, it's a song of surrender, really, and contentment. <clears throat> Go ahead Come and dredge the depths of me I won't hold back anything From your hand Instead Oh, 
you all so much. Yes. Oh, Lovebird is very loving now, right? We learned. And he has kisses for anybody that wants one. Oh, Lovebird gives kisses. What? Go see him. Find Here out. Go. You can give him a hug if you want to. <laughs> a hug for a kiss. <laughs> if there's any adults who want to kiss too, you're not too old. <laughs> They're hurting kisses. <laughs> They're hurting kisses. Don't be too serious. Oh. There you go. Thank you, Shelby. Thank you. So we have books and a CD that are for, um, available for purchase. They are out in the room where, where the library is, so feel free to um, look at that. And thank you very much for your participation. And you are...